Thank you very much, my colleagues, uh, Professor Dr. Osama, and uh, again, thank you for all and a warm welcome to all speakers who traveled abroad. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the first announcement of the last distinction of uh, hemodialysis Egyptian guidelines. And we worked and we declared that we didn't found it by any means, and we just spent our time to do such guidelines. So, uh, in shortly, that's an announcement and I'm going to stone and implement the guidelines in Egypt. And if you look for that, the Egyptian guidelines or uh, nephrology initiatives of care and excellence will be in two parts. One part is the hemodialysis and second part for GN hypertension and transplantation. Heartfelt thanks for all the working groups, starting from Professor Dr. Henry Hafez and my colleagues in the different universities and hospitals who shared this very heavy work to be completed during four months of heavy work during 2019. And the Egyptian Nice has many aspects, from starting from the uh, strategies of hemodialysis going to different aspects of hemodialysis therapy and had been uh, also supplemented for uh, dialysis in AKI and infection control measures and had been reviewed by four uh, eminent uh, professors and in conjunction with uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mike Hasbala because it's a guideline and at the same time it's a registry and it makes the performance measurements very uh, heartfelt thankful for the uh, group and the team and just uh, representing the world and the editor, but it's a heavy work for all the group. And it had been uh, also uh, from the Supreme Council of uh, University Hospital, so it should be applied uh, at least starting from uh, this year to all university hospitals. So what's the agenda? It's actually my questions. I asked myself uh, and you, and what are the need of guideline and what chapters involve it and what's the difference between national and international guidelines and is it affordable or when to start and these guidelines how to be applicable and some selected topics. So if you look to Africa, we started uh, hemodialysis very early, 1964. Uh, at that time I was very junior, I think I was uh, two years old. So I didn't miss the movie because it started after my birth. And if you look to other countries, development for hemodialysis uh, started uh, later. And in particular, when revolutions and wars in Africa with many crushed energy, so this is an urgement for the access to be started. And if you look to Africa, where we are, uh, Egypt, uh, about two to three million people die because there is no availability of dialysis. And there is uh, a lot of problems in Africa in general because it's insufficient infrastructures, catastrophic out-of-pocket costs, high, uh, most patients uh, remain undiagnosed, and insufficient manpower. When you look to Egypt, it's 50 year, five years anniversary this year, and we have sufficient infrastructure, 100% cost cover is still extremely low. All patients with diagnosis and full knowledge based manpower. So it's 55 years on hemodialysis, but we don't have a guideline. So we have to start. We are not only perfect, we are 55 years old on hemodialysis. 
Thanks for the great news of started from April 2019, working hardly for four or five months to be completed, and the process of quality of care of hemodialysis run in three main projects. One is the structure of units, second is the process how we deliver the care, and thirdly, the clinical outcome of patients. So this guideline describes three main parts, the structure, process, and outcome. The structure and pump power, if you need uh, structures and human resources, and you can deliver high efficient hemodialysis with adequacy, frequency, standard operation procedure, vascular access type, membranes, and hemodial filtration. Defining the adequacy of hemodialysis beyond only urea kinetics. And these are structures of hemodialysis. Typically, if we need to innovate more in hemodialysis unit, we have to put at least 10 activities inside the hemodialysis, including social, including PD, including as well a, a transplantation program inside the hemodialysis unit. In the learning process, we did a lot of discussion, educational, to have a leader in hemodialysis unit to manage in all aspects of basics and advances in hemodialysis. And teleconference as well, with the professor Dr. Hassan Aisha, we are doing much more. And we are looking for teledialysis in some centers. We are far, very far from uh, our access. And now, while we are in need of guideline, here is the hemodialysis guideline, Egyptian one, is into implementing a guide for optimal care, standardized uh, treatment, as well as hemodialysis monitoring, data registry, data analysis, and monitoring for improvement. So both of them are components of our hemodialysis guidelines. So a guideline with no clinical performance measurement is typically like Father Day. We never remember Father Day. So if we put a guideline alone without implementation, it will be just a book. So we have a clinical performance measurements, and we have a lot of domains, how much is being applied for such domains, and how much percent of success against failure in order to improve the quality of therapy. Activities in recording and reporting, we don't know more sedentary life in hemodialysis units. We, we need a dynamic activities. We need reporting, recording every minute on dialysis sections. Keep recording and monitoring your patients. Together, let us keep dialysis patients safe and reporting is a must for improvement. Based on both, Measuring the outcomes, nephrology needs, and as perfectly described by Professor Cano, is two patients need. So the outcome here, let us uh, uh, hear or listen to the patient voice for the depression, shortened his life, disabilities, pain, as well, and of course, uh, if the patient died earlier. So these are also our targets to improve the quality of care on dialysis. Each information will be valuable. And the scope is designed to provide information and assist decision making and the health care provider to optimize patient management to the excellency of hemodialysis therapy. From the big data to analysis and inside, we don't have enough information up to now, so no sufficient data at the moment in Egypt, but we started by 6,000 patients and growing, nearly 10% of patient population. The World Position Methods Initiative is to the submission, digitalization, artificial intelligence, and personalized medicine. Our talk is about the personalized medicine and no one size fit for all. We have to move from hemodialysis therapy as one size. We have to promote it for personalized therapy, individualized treatment, and service should be high and high flux membrane are equally and hemodial filtration.
فيش حد فرصه بقى Shut down again. I will be in a hurry. So we have, we need to operational improvement and monitoring of service, and just comply with all of these guidelines, uh, international wise. And uh, this guideline is affordable. It's a problem in Egypt because costs are generally described in four items. We have a problem in the direct medical cost and and we have a very limited free investment. So we are facing trouble financially to cover the cost of quality, but we are still trying to do that. Uh, still we have uh, 
problem in country is still phenomenal. We have decreasing number of nephrologists because for financial reasons are escaping from the country. So we have a very low number of uh, junior nephrologists right now. Although Egypt covering most of the dialysis cost, still the reimbursement is very, very low. And when you look to the dialysis cost in the middle income countries, you find that all the, at least the low income countries, are 3x or 5x the reimbursement uh, uh, than in Egypt. And if you look at for the Canadian, for example, uh, uh, the majority of cost for the manpower nurses and doctors more than even the disposables, and it's around 3 or 4x for nurses and doctors than the cost of disposables, and here is Egypt. You can find that here for the cost, uh, for the manpower, for nurses and doctors, so we have escaped from dialysis and we don't find any more, more uh, expertise in dialysis because of financial problems. So, patients as well, central cost, we can decrease the comorbidities by adequacy of dialysis and decreasing the overall cost for, for that. International analysis of dialysis service reimbursement found that in the low-income countries, that 29% reimbursement of the cost, so the patient has to pay around 70%, or should be socially funded by others. And in Chams University, we have a lot of funds for that, as well in Mansoura and universities, but it's not a government payment because the cost is nearly triple what they had been uh, received from the reimbursement. For the BD, we have a random cases of BD, but the cost is 5x, not because the BD is expensive, but the hemodialysis reimbursement is very low, so it's 5x cost. So we cannot uh, introduce a, a continuous uh, BD program because the cost is high than hemodialysis, although country-wise it's really one-to-one, -one. In Egypt, it's uh, 5x cost of BD than hemodialysis, as I thought that because the reimbursement of hemodialysis here in Egypt is very, very low. So what and the way we should start? We should start immediately. We have six steps from the uh, Supreme Council of University of Hospitals started. And we have at least six steps, publishing the guidelines and done, educating the points of guidelines, collecting data from centers, evaluating centers by way of achievement, and re-evaluating an improved program. We are here, and soon we will have more evaluation by center, then we can consider that the clinical performance measurements, improvement scale metrics, and quality of care, and the total performance score, I think we can start it two or three years later, when we have the access to the patient opportunity for him and the quality improvement project to achieve better results. We described that in three parts, three domains, clinical safety and reporting, and 15% at least of the domains for reporting. People who did not report will take 0% because they are not reporting, and other uh, total performance scores are classified by weight in between uh, the dialysis center. So these are clinical measures I uh, hope that we can reach it within two years, how we, the center approach and how the center uh, scoring is paid. And this is a topic from the guideline. I will not take that in, in depth, but we talk about the concentrate, the dialysis membrane, and we are always encouraging high flux membranes and people who are still using low flux center should avoid losing low flux anymore. Implementing hemodialysis uh, filtration as well, it's a guide for the vascular access and uh, hemodialysis filtration, how to implement. And the choice of patients, all these are written in details for the hemodialysis filtration program, as well as the therapeutic approach and filtration fraction. So it's a textbook of hemodialysis filtration in brief to reach a guide for hemodialysis filtration. Patients who need more care, like patients not achieving flowering, KT, over V, and pregnancy during uh, dialysis, are described in details to augment hemodialysis therapy. We took also for the blood tubing recommendations, hemodialysis dose quantification using urea kinetic modeling, 
adequacy of hemodialysis based on multifactorial goals with maximized quality of life and maximized survival. Heart perfiltration are described as well recommendations. Hemodynamic instability, standard operating procedures. We have 15 points discussing that in the book, a standard operation procedure, how to deal with intradirect hypotension, how to deal with vomiting, headache, cramps, everything on the patient's knee. So nutrition as well takes apart, looking for the sarcopenia and the frailty, how to avoid and also the manpower and how to work in a team work in this guideline. Commissioning and the responsibility with the director, manager and operator, how to manage the hemodialysis unit infection control measures, as well as rationale for hemodialysis strategy. We work also for the vascular access with all the details and information of the vascular access type and complication, CPD, MPD, anemia management, dialysis in API, infection control measures. And finally, to conclude, this is the first Egyptian guidelines for hemodialysis of the fifth year more than 50 years of experience in hemodialysis and it started to fulfill the needs in hemodialysis prescription monitoring for the best outcome. We will not meet again in like a room with an elephant in, in the room. We will go directly, dynamically to proceed for the hemodialysis guidelines and overcoming all challenges, a guide to be implemented in steps and in progressive way, approach to have the best practice in a minimum cost requirement and thank you very much my team and the, uh, for you as well for your uh, acceptance of this guideline. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Most of the power uh, to think about you have to sum up 